Cat, no, cat, I'm trying to record a video. Cat, hey, hey, hey. One second. What's up, gamers? It's been a while. So it's been like five months or so since I posted my last video. Sorry about that, didn't mean to leave y'all hanging. And I'm about to get back into the swing of posting some more content, but I felt like I just needed to kind of update everyone on what's been going on in my life, rather than just pretending like I didn't disappear for five months, you know? Come, <laughs> come back with the... Um... I had, a, I had a joke, but I lost it. I'm, I'm gonna be releasing some more videos soon, uh, with the plan being a new video every two weeks, but I didn't wanna just come back without at least updating people on what's been going on in my life and why I disappeared in the first place. Now, anyone who watched my last video and is aware that I'm currently developing an indie game might be thinking like, oh, you disappeared for five months. You probably made a lot of progress on the indie game and you're gonna show us a bunch of cool stuff for the game. <laughs> Nope, <laughs> not even close. Yeah, I didn't make very much progress on the game. I mean, I did do some stuff, and I'll talk about the stuff I got done uh, towards the end of the video, but what happened is that about a month into the new year, after I had been working on the game for a couple weeks, I got reached out to by a small indie studio working on a project that I think is gonna be really cool when it comes out. And I was more than happy to jump on board and get to work on that game. So I decided to join in, you know, lend my engineering talents to the team. Uh, the problem is that this ended up taking the vast majority of my time over the past few months. And I was a little bit hesitant to try to make videos while I was coming up to speed on that project or even giving an update to anyone because mostly I was just having a lot of self-doubt and didn't really know what my plan forward was. But after I got into the swing of things and realized that I liked working on that project and wanted to stick around at that studio for a while, I realized that I all I didn't want to give up <laughs> Isadora's Edge. I wanted to keep working on my own indie game and I wanted to continue posting updates to this channel and, and being a part of this indie dev YouTube community that I'm so fond of. So I got back to work trying to get everything done in my free time. I tried to record some footage. I worked on the game. Um, I tried to do a little bit of editing, but the problem was that I just didn't have enough time to get everything done. There were basically like five things that I needed to do. I needed to design the game, make the art, program the game, film these devlogs, and edit the devlogs. And that was eating up way too much time. I came to the conclusion that I could only do three of them. And for a while, I thought the three were gonna be design, art, program. Uh, and I just wasn't gonna upload videos for a while. But the more I worked on the project like that, the more I really didn't like it. I've become pretty fond of posting these videos and interacting with the community, you know. I've managed to make several good friends during this process, you know, shout out to Sidfish and Mighty Jor and just everyone that I've been able to talk to about games in a way that I haven't been able to before I started this channel. Um, and reading through all the comments on my last devlog with people giving ideas and, you know, talking about what could possibly be the story for the game, it was really cool to see people getting invested into something that I was personally invested in that, like, came from my own mind. I I'm sure a lot of the indie devs watching this video can relate to that feeling of I've created something and now it's real and people are interacting with it like seriously it's it's a great feeling and so working on the game in a little silo where no one could see what I was doing and I posted updates on Twitter a little bit it, it felt really bad and I did not like it so <laughs> if I can only do three of the five things and I want to make videos what are the two things that I can get rid of well I want to design the game and I am really good at programming, so it would feel silly to try to outsource that. And I clearly need to record the videos. <laughs> It'd be a little bit strange if I hired a guy <laughs> to stand here and talk about the game that I'm making. Although now that I say that, it might be pretty funny. <laughs> so that leaves the art and the editing. Over the past couple months, I've talked to a few people and tried to get some feelers out there, uh, reached out to some friends of mine that knew contacts, and I managed to find a video editor and a pixel artist that I think are really cool people, and I'm really excited to work with them on the project, and I think it's gonna be great to work together on this stuff. Um, editor Senpai, feel, feel free to say hello if you please, uh, or cut this out if you don't wanna say it, or leave this whole thing in and make me look like a damn fool. And so with that in mind, I think this project's gonna be really awesome, you know? I'll still record these devlogs for you, and make sure that you all know what's going on with the game. And the pixel art in the game will be even better than it was gonna be previously because the pixel artist who came on to help with the project is very, very good and I was not so much. And hopefully you can expect an even higher quality of video as well due to the fact that a professional video editor that actually knows what they're doing will be editing it, <clears throat> will be editing it instead of me, who's kind of a dimbus. A dimbus? A dimbus. Dimbus. Did I combine the words dingus and nimbusel? Is that what a dimbus is? I should, like, script this stuff, huh?
So that's kind of where I'm at and where the project's at. I've made some progress on it that I'll get into, but I think it's an exciting new chapter for the game. And the other thing that I'm really excited about for this new chapter of the game is the fact that by working with a video editor, I should be able to put out videos much more consistently. You know, before I would just record and then I would edit it and it would take me forever. And then as soon as I finished it, I would just post it because I meant to post it several days ago and it just took me longer than I thought. But now by working with an editor, we should be able to keep a consistent schedule where you guys know you can look forward to a new video every two weeks. That's the goal. We'll see if we can reach that goal, but that's the goal. So now let's talk about the game a little bit, I guess. <laughs> Um, I'm, I mentioned in the first video, if you haven't seen it, it might be a good time to go watch it. Maybe put a little info card. Did I, I just like literally hit myself in the face. <laughs> Maybe put a little info card up here. But my goal was to do it one level at a time and that's still how I'm approaching it. The first thing I did was create this really sick room loading system. It holds the room you're in and the adjacent rooms in memory so that when you transition into a new room, it automatically has it ready to go, hot swaps it in, and then it unloads the rooms that are no longer adjacent and loads in the rooms that are now adjacent. That way the load times are wicked fast, but there's not a bunch of junk sitting around in memory. It was probably an unnecessary optimization. I probably could have done some really barbaric, super, you know, super ham-fisted level loading and no one would have known the difference, but at least the transition looks pretty cool. And then I wanted each level to have like four or five mechanics that were unique to it that kind of defined its play style. I might end up moving away from that. I'm not 100% sure. I'd love to hear what you think about that kind of design style in the comments, but I did come up with those four or five mechanics for the Corrupted Forest, which is the first level I'm working on. The first mechanic that I did were these plague pits. At least that's what I've been calling them. Um, and it's, it's basically just like a little watery pool but instead of being water, it's poison. It was supposed to be like a poison gas, but it turned way more into just like a poisoned lake rather than, you know, corruption mist. But they look really sick. I think the fluid dynamics on how they interact with the player are really nice. Um, I love the bubbles that come up to the top, the very slight slowing effect that has on the player when they enter them. It, it all feels really good. Um, it does damage to the player over time after you have stayed in the pit for a certain duration. So it's kind of a, so it's a mechanic that you can jump into the pit if you can get out of it quickly, but if you get knocked into the pit or you can't escape the pit quickly, it can punish you. The second mechanic I implemented were these collapsing platforms. They're very straightforward. If you stand on them, they go away and you fall. I think it should pair really nicely with the, the plague pits because you put a collapsing platform over the plague pit and then the player fall into it and they go, ow. I'm not super in love with the pixel art I did for it, uh, especially because it doesn't really have a great regrowth animation right now. Um, but I've kind of put working on the pixel art on the back burner um, since I have a pixel artist coming in to help me. Um, I still want to be involved in doing pixel art for the game because I just love making pixel art. So just completely abandoning it right now would feel kind of bad. The mechanic works just fine. Uh, it feels very natural to play with. It works exactly how you'd expect a collapsing platform to work. I implemented these grasping roots, not Zyra from League of Legends, but they come out of the ground and will try to grab Isadora. And if they successfully do, then you're wrapped and then you'll have to button mash to escape out of it. Now, eventually I probably will need an accessibility option for holding to get out instead of mashing. Um, Cause I know not everyone can actually mash, but uh, it feels akin to what I played when I was a kid. So that's what I in <laughs> uh, implemented initially. I will definitely need to do a an in-depth accessibility dive on this game before it can come out, but it feels really cool. I like the way that it stuns the player. The way the grasping roots actually work mechanically is they pop out of the ground and then they wiggle for a second before trying to grasp. So you have a moment to react, you know? If you're ready and not preoccupied with other threats or trying to dodge enemies or get out of a plague pit, then you, you have an opportunity to get out of the grasp. But if you don't react to it in time, you don't dash out of it, you don't do whatever, then you're grabbed and you're screwed, right? And I like the opportunities that give me to actually interact with the player in the space with how, how I can control where they can and can't stand. And the final mechanic that I implemented, which I'm not convinced is gonna stay in the final version of the game, um, are the lanterns. Uh, they work very similarly to how the boss fight currently works. Um, and if you don't know what that means, uh, the boss will throw out these lanterns that shake and then shoot a laser beam between them. And the mechanic for the level is that exact same attack, but it just happens on the level. Uh, and I created a nice like waypoint tracing system and each of the lanterns knows how to shoot between the other lanterns. It's, it's a system that I could very easily draw out these fun lantern shapes that you have to successfully dodge. But I'm not sure if that lantern mechanic is gonna be in the final version of the boss, because as I've kind of iterated on the story and come up with more ideas for what I want the game to actually be about, 
uh, the less I think that the lantern attack from the Plague Doctor boss like really works. Um, I've kind of completely rewritten the story for who the Plague Doctor is. Um, and that's something that I'm really excited to get into with you because over the past few months, I've had a lot of time where the story has just been sitting in the back of my mind. Uh, and I have a lot of ideas and I'm excited to share that with everyone so that, you know, we can kind of build this story together. But that's to come in future videos. I don't, and I don't want this one to be too long. You know, the main point of this video is to say, I've been working on the game. There is some cool new stuff in the game, but it had a big, long, deadly pause <laughs> where I joined a new studio and then had to find people to help me so I could actually get stuff done. Um, and that's really the main takeaway is that teamwork makes the dream work or something like that. I think this is a vid- I think I, I think I made a video. I think. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, since this is a YouTube video, I should remind you to lick the like button. No, why did I say that? Please press the like button and don't do anything else to it. Please subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate it a lot. Uh, like, leave a comment. Um, let me know what you think um, about the mechanics that I described to you. Let me know what you think about the two-week structure. Um, and eh, say hi to the <laughs> to the new video editor. Um, really excited to, to keep moving forward with this project now that I've kind of got settled into to the new way things are going to be for me, all right? Peace out, dudes. See ya. Deuces or something. Bye.